Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another live action episode of Scoot Review. I'm your host, Scooter Brad, and today we're going to be diving deep into the world of scootering wheels, comparing every single size and spec from 100 mil all the way up to 125. Not only are we going into the eight standard wheel, but we're also going into the 12 standards. Wheels are such a crucial element to everybody's scooter. They determine how fast you go, how many tricks you can do, how much balance you have, and just how it overall makes your scooter feel. To this day, majority of riders are still sitting on those 24 wide by 110 or 120 mil diameter wheels. Each size has its own unique advantages and disadvantages, but the new player that's entered the chat, the 30 wide, who is he? What does he do? Why is he here? Throughout this video, I'm gonna break it all down for you. We're gonna talk about all the pros and the cons of each wheel size, examining how they impact speed, agility, and landing impact. Carbon fiber cores, metal cores, plastic cores, where are we at these days? Let's take a look. Alright guys, let's chat about these CNC high precision 88A PU polyurethane ties. You might be asking yourself, what does that big mouthful of gibberish mean? Well, scooter wheels don't vary too much in hardness. I will outline those specs as we go through the video, but it really just comes down to the maker and model. As a general overview, these wheels are all somewhere between 86 and 90. It all depends on the specific formulation and the purpose of the material. For example, you might find soft polyurethane in comfortable shoes or flexible phone cases. On the other hand, hard polyurethane can be found in things like skateboard wheels, heavy duty industrial parts, or even truck bushings, the things that you know, trucks go together and there's a little, a little. So these tires are not super squishy like a marshmallow, but they're not rock hard like a, well, a rock. For example, you're taking your scooter out for a ride. You're doing some jumps and you get a whole lot of ground shock. This could be an indication that your PU urethane is really hard. That is when this information will come into handy. When you're shopping, look for something that's a little bit lower on the rating scale. That way you'll be fitting your individual needs and desires rather than just buying something for show. Now, you might've come to this video looking for a surefire way to never ever dehub a single set of wheels ever again. Well, I hate to burst the bubble, but it's not actually possible. There's a teeny tiny slither of adhesive holding your whole life together right here. Picture the scooter wheel having two main parts, the metal core or the hub in the center and the outer layer made of polyurethane. Now, when these two parts come together, they need to stick together really well to make a solid wheel. So. Manufacturers use a special process to bond the polyurethane to the metal hub. It's like when you use super strong super glue to stick two things together. That happened quick. Only it's a lot better and much more precise. They have to use a special adhesive that works specifically for bonding polyurethane and metal. This bonding process ensures that the wheel stays intact, even when you're cruising around, doing tricks and having a blast on your skew. Now. Don't tell them I told you this, but just look really closely at all these wheels here. You notice something? Pretty much all the bearings are exactly the same. You might've heard about the ABEC scale. ABEC stands for Annular Bearings Engineers Committee. This is a system that measures the precision and tolerance of all the scooter bearings. The most important note I can give you here is the scale goes from one to nine. Anything you see that's marketed outside of that scale? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. One of these, a little bit of this one up here. Sure, having something high on the tolerance scale seems like a good idea, but the ball bearing was developed over 200 years ago. I think they've got it sussed. And as for the term ABEC 11, I cannot find a single genuine resource that confirms this is actually a thing. This article was surely written by AI because it mentions it like it was prompted, but then literally confirms that the scale goes one to nine. What happened to 10? Where, where are the 10s? When it comes to bearings in scooter wheels, you'll often find them rated ABEC 9. The ABEC rating doesn't solely determine the quality of a bearing. Other factors such as material, design, and maintenance also play a significant role in their overall performance. Things do go a little haywire when we talk about headset bearings. And of course, we can't forget that there are 12 mil standard ones as well. Generally speaking, all these wheels do come with the same pre-installed bearings. Replacing any bearing inside your scooter wheel can actually cause more damage to the core itself. You'll tip it over and the bearing will pop out like so. 
The only circumstance I could think of for appropriately changing out bearings is if they are already falling out of the wheel and you have no other choice. There's really no benefit to quote upgrading your bearings. Replacing damaged ones obviously makes sense, but if you simply just maintain your bearings from the get-go and keep them away from the rain, you're going to be fine. So as it turns out, the whole ABEX system is a bit of a myth. All the evidence suggests that we're all just riding a big old hype train. Did you know that Bones bearings don't even give an ABEX rating on their products? They also have a massive problem with counterfeiters. But if the ABEX rating is useless, then how do we tell apart a good bearing from a bad one? So anybody who ever tells you that they go faster on an EBIC 9 probably just compares it with the previous bearings that they had, uh, which were probably like worn already. Firstly, let's just assume that you've disregarded the ABEC rating system entirely, and with good reason. Are the ball bearings ceramic or steel? It is widely believed that ceramic balls are superior to the standard steel because they are stronger and smoother. The balls themselves are then held together and evenly spaced apart by what are called retainers. Retainers use two main materials, either nylon or metal. There's not a lot of tell when shopping for bearings what balls or retainers they actually use, but the shield is blatantly obvious. A rubber shield provides much more security for the ball bearings inside. Whatever you do, make sure you get a bearing that has two seals, one on both sides. Having one side exposed only allows for more dirt to get inside and you don't want that. Types of spaces inside the packet are also something to look out for. Ringless ones like these are no good. They don't stay in the center of your wheel. You want one with added material on the outside like this one. This will keep the spacer in the center of the wheel and make it much easier to insert the fastening bolts. Every single one of these wheels has ABEC 9 bearings pre-installed. These ones are red, these ones are black. They're the same thing. When it comes to precision, the wider, the better. Thinner wheels tend to offer a bit of a lightweight profile to your scooter, but the wider ones offer a lot more balance. The wider profile provides a larger contact area with the ground, allowing for improved grip and control during tricks and maneuvers. The 30 wide made a big splash back in 2017 into 18. Brands like Eagle were manufacturing these in-house by the truckload, dishing them out to all the popular creators, trying to get these to catch on. They kind of did and they kind of haven't at the same time. However, it's important to note that wider wheels also come with added weight, which can slightly affect your overall agility and especially overheads. It's a trade-off between stability and weight where riders need to find the right balance based on their own riding styles and preferences. On the other hand, the diameter of the wheels, such as 100, 110, 115, 120, and 125, affects the ride height of the scooter, basically how far it is off the floor. Ultimately, making a decision on which one you want to go with is a personal choice. If this is the first time you've ever watched something to do with scootering, maybe check out some 100 mils as a starting point. But if you've got plenty of experience, you've been through a lot of 110s, maybe it's time to look at the 30 wide option. Let's take a closer look at someone who actually rides the 30 wides. Professional scooter rider Rumit Salik chooses to ride the Triad Conspiracy Wheels, allowing for what they describe as a lightning fast ride that professionals like Rumit Salik rely on when executing their tricks and maneuvers, especially in contests. If you've ever watched that guy ride, he goes hard and fast, HNFG. Okay, but so, you know, if this is a hollow core and there really is nothing in between this bit and this bit, how, well, how do they do that? Well, I've got the answer. First, a computer-aided design or CAD model of the wheel is created. The desired dimensions, shape, and features will all be baked into this CAD file. This digital design is then translated by the machines into machine-readable code that guides the CNC machine throughout the production process. Essentially, they'll take a big circular piece of metal, plug it into the computer, and tell the computer what to cut out of it. While polyurethane is a durable material, it's important to know that it's not completely indestructible. Every single pair of wheels you're gonna get are going to break, whether or not you ride it right down to the core or it just peels off entirely. It's going to happen. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. So remember to keep a close eye on your parts, visit a rider-owned or rider-employed store for regular servicing, and most important, smash like and subscribe.